Hey bosses, ever feel overwhelmed by marketing? I get it. Let's tackle it together with a VO Boss Blast. We're all about making marketing as enjoyable as voice acting itself. Dive in with me and let's blast off together and let's turn those marketing challenges into victories. Sign up today at VOBoss.com. Hi, Anne. My name is Tolu Koladi. I am a Nigerian and I love your podcast. I listen every week and I discovered it last year. And I must say it has been an incredible eye opener for me, helping me to get better in my craft. Even as a Nigerian and an African, there are many tips that are so useful for me. And uh, guess what? You inspired me to also create my own podcast, which is also based on voiceovers so i love what you do and keep doing what you do thank you it's time to take your business to the next level the boss level these are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today rock your business like a boss a vo boss now let's welcome your host and ganguza everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast and the Boss Superpower Series. I'm your host, Anne Ganguza, and I'm here with the very lovely Law Lapidas today. Hey, Hi. Annie. So happy to be here, uh, as always. Law, you look lovely. Thank you. You look gorgeous today. You do too. We're getting ready for summer. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, it's funny because I just celebrated my eighth year for VO Boss. Woohoo! Woo! Yeah, eighth year. And things have changed. I'll tell you what, in podcasting and, and of mm-hmm. course, in our own industry. But I used to only do this audio. But the way technology has evolved, I mean, everything is video content and on camera. And it just has changed. So we have to be prepared, not just for doing the voice. But I had to do my hair this morning and do the color coordination and the outfit. So Wait, are you, are you trying to tell me that you may have to be on camera? Yes, we may have to be on camera as voice actors. And that's like, <gasps> remember everybody in the beginning, I got into voiceover so that I didn't have to show my face. But guess what, guys? There's an entire world of opportunities that law <sighs> firsthand can talk about in terms of casting, right? And on oh my camera goodness, work. yes, and you can talk about it too because you're always webcasting. This and is true. This podcasting is true. and on camera social media, Content. on casting with Zoom. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's endless. We are on, on, on camera, and we were just talking about this before. And I think it's really important for voiceover talent at all levels to be thinking about potentially nabbing some on-camera work. Yeah. Really, the opportunities are there. They're vast. Yes, it gets slow and there's ebbs and flows, just like there are in voiceover. But if you are going to reach out, say, for instance, to an agency and you say, well, I want to get some more reps or I need a rep. I don't even Mm -hmm. have a rep. How do I do it? One of your check boxes, if you can, is the fact that you are able, capable, and willing and wanting to do on-camera work. Because a lot of the agencies, especially the boutique agencies, will sign you what they call across the board, meaning they're interested in you as a voiceover talent, but they also want to know you can do on-camera commercial work or print work or anything that has to do with maybe a non-broadcast industrial. So I would say I mean, one of the things I always say to our coaching clients is, think about it. If you absolutely do not want to be doing it, be honest and don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because there's Mm -hmm. a huge line behind you of actors that want to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And we convert many voiceover talent to also do on camera and have that combo on their resume. And they love it. And oftentimes they say, oh, I had no idea how fun this was. Mm -hmm. I thought I had a face for radio. And I say, you have to retire that old, stupid phrase. There is. (laughs) Yes, it is old and stupid. You're absolutely right. And let me tell you, the stranger you look, the odder you look, the more real you look, the more work you get. You're going to get more work than a supermodel. Yes, the more desirable you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Flaws and everything, guys. I mean, I actually love that the camera is embracing these things now because real people, right? Real people. Real people. There's an agency in New York, Annie, that's pretty hip. It's called Funny Faces. 
Mm -hmm. And they represent only real people. Now, those are actors still. They're trained sure, actors. Sure. But they're actors that specifically do not look like model types, which mm -hmm. is most mm -hmm. actors. Yeah, absolutely. And they're getting most of the work because yeah. they want, just like in voiceover today, they want real people. They want real people who look like real people. Human And who sound people. like real people. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. So I would have my students say to me, Oh, gosh, I thought I was just training for voiceover. I just spent all this money training for voiceover. What do I have to do for on-camera law? Mm. One thing I would say is, and I hear this a lot, I've heard this for years and years, is, oh, that's an interesting idea. I wouldn't mind doing that. I mean, if they asked me, I'd say, I wouldn't mind it. I'd say, listen, don't ever come into it that way. Because I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't mind, mind it. It's like saying, yeah, it's yeah, like maybe. saying, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, would you clean up the table? I don't mind cleaning up the table. No, you have to have some passion for it. You have yeah. to have some real wanting to do it. Because just like in voiceover, you're up against trained actors. You're up against yeah. people who really are dying for jobs and want the job. So you really want to have, find that in you. Test it. Train. Coach, number one, just like in everything we say. Coach for acting for on camera. Take some improv classes. Make sure you're in a few acting classes that you're having fun. You must have fun. If it's against your grain, if it's like taking medicine when you're sick, don't do it. You really have to do it if you're saying, yeah. ooh, this is kind of enjoyable. It's kind of sassy. I'm having a good time with that. Or, all right, you have to come into it with the right spirit and the right positive mindset. Otherwise, it's like, don't do us any favors because you're not doing us any favors. Mm -hmm. We can find and work with trained actors very, very easily. So come in with a good attitude. Coach and take your classes. Start thinking right away about getting involved with films, student sure. films, mm -hmm. independent mm -hmm. films. It's not about money at that point. It's about building an actor real sure. and building your resume yeah. and getting some experience in front of the camera. Certainly theater, if you're interested in theater, great, but that's a different path. And how simple is it now with social media and our iPhones that we can get comfortable in front of the camera? And it is a thing, guys, because I know when I first started getting out there, okay, you've got to look at the camera. Like right now I'm looking at the camera and I want to look at law on the screen in front of me, but no, I have to look at my camera because that's where my eyes go. And so like little things like that. And then just being able to be yourself, being able to go off script, being able to be on script and sound natural and to just have that, again, that authentic you come out. Gosh, we have all the time in the world and all the resources at our fingertips to start to see if maybe that's something we're comfortable with. So true. And one of the things that people don't realize is 90% of your casting for on camera is the way you look. Maybe 95% is the way you look. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you don't have to have talent. You do. It just yeah. means they're going to cast you first on your physical type, and then they're going to see what you're bringing to the table. So working on memorization is a big deal. That's really mm -hmm. part of your job to memorize scripts, learning how to use a teleprompter yes. on their laptop, which is a wonderful skill yeah. to learn. If anything, it focuses your brain and keeps you very calm. There's just some interesting skills that are going to help you in your voiceover, your character building, your analysis of a script, oh, of a character. absolutely. Right? Absolutely. You're thinking fast on your feet in improv. How do I create off other people and really acutely listen to what they're saying to me and really be able to create? I'll tell you, I know firsthand that when you're in a film listen, set or without TV. without interrupting. <laughs> I'm written listen, on my shirt. Listen. Listen to my breast without interrupting. <laughs> I know, and I just interrupted you while I said that. So. <laughs> See awesome. how I took my own advice? <laughs> yeah, there That's we go. That's great. That's great. But I mean, I'll tell you, especially with the younger generation coming up, Annie, the directors are different nowadays. Like they are really wanting actors to come in and be prepared and give them ideas, mm -hmm, give mm -hmm. them characters, give them stuff that they can have fun with, steal and run away with and enjoy with you. Hasn't that always been the way? I feel like that's always I been. Guess I so. feel like in voiceover, yeah. people are always like, well, why do they write the script like that when they want us to be real? Well, because I think they want to hear your interpretation of it. And so yes. I think half the time those scripts are written with an intensive purpose yes. to make you get creative and really figure out how you're going to tell that story, even though you have no idea what those words mean. That's really and what it is. And a lot of those directors, 
no commentary on them in particular, on that generation in particular, they're not trained to train you. Yeah. They're trained yeah. to cast you and to have you get as close to the role as possible where they're tweaking you. Mm. They're doing adjustments with you. They don't want to give you the character. They don't want to build you from the ground up. They don't want to give you an acting class. They want you to make, yeah, it is like voiceover. They want you to make life easy for them, Absolutely. fast for them. Time is money. They're renting equipment from houses. They don't want to have that extra day of shooting. And oftentimes you won't even meet the actors until the day of the shoot. That's your husband. That's your mm-hmm. child. That's mm-hmm. your... So you have to learn. That's why we always say, take improv, take improv. Yeah. Because you have to learn to say, oh, Annie is now your therapist. Oh, Anne's now your sister. Oh, Anne's now your lover. Whatever. You have to learn to buy into it mm-hmm. very quick mm-hmm. and say, yes, and Yes, and mm-hmm. Yes, and And for the voiceover on a script, I think it's invaluable because it really allows you to walk into the world of the copy very oh, fast. Absolutely. Absolutely. And not second guess mm-hmm. it quite as much as we would as us, but to say, right. okay, well, you know, McDonald's could be in a fairy tale land. Sure, why not? You know, I talk to people all the time and my voiceover students all the time about the script. And I'm like, how many times do you run into your studio and you simply recite the words in a melody that you hear in your head without understanding the story behind it? And when there are words that come up and you're like, I have no idea what that means, you just say them. And when you say them with no point of view, you haven't been able to tell a story. You haven't shown that you've done the work. And that's why when you audition... And you can come in with that story and that point of view. And you've got that improv, that subtextual understanding, that character backstory. And you've got that all figured out, even for an e-learning module. I'm just saying. Even for corporate. Then they know that you're an actor. And they know that they can cast you and direct you to just about anything. And that is the work that we actors must do. And if we do that work in voiceover, it's absolutely plausible and possible for you to do it on camera. No question. And there is that spirit that actors Mm -hmm. talk about that takes them over where it goes from words on a page. I'm comprehending it. I'm analyzing it. I'm trying to understand it and profile it to, oh, this interpretation that comes over you that starts to personalize from your reservoir, your emotional reservoir. Well, we're always asking for that in voiceover, too. Like, how do I personalize the script? How do I get to my well, reservoir of tone and emotion so that I don't get sing-songy and I don't absolutely. fall into cadence and rhythm? It's what a lot of our agents in casting say after they audition talent. That person is not connected. They're oh, absolutely. You need to be connected. Connected. You need to be connected. I kind of keep bringing this back to voiceover. Sorry, because there's so many parallels where so many people will complain the way the script is written. I'm like, that's not your job to complain about how the script is written. I mean, it's your job as an actor to interpret that script and to interpret that script in a way that Mm -hmm. makes it authentic and believable. Yeah, and the reality is if you really don't like it and you have a right to disagree with it, not like it, or just not want to do it, then don't do it. Yeah. Rather than coming into the job and saying, Mm -hmm. well, why is it written this way? And why is it this way? Well, then already I'm not open to the job. I'm really not open to the job. So we always say when you're coming into a role, don't judge it. Don't adjudicate it. Don't make commentary on it Mm. as you as the actor. Yes. Just try to engage, try to communicate with it, try to personalize it in yes. every way you can as quickly as possible. Yes, yes, yes. And that takes practice. And we had another podcast that we talked about the amount of work that it takes, right? That takes practice to do that, to understand that, to do the analysis, to get the acting, to understand the subtext, and to really do the preparation needed to execute voiceover or on camera that acting so that it is something successful for you. Yeah, I hear voiceover talent all the time say things like, well, this is hard law. I would never (laughs) say this. I would never say this. I said, because this isn't you saying this. This is someone else saying this. Mm -hmm. You're embodying the spirit of someone else. You really are. I mean, we're not asking you to say this or feel this in your kitchen. We're asking you to do this as part of your job. So if you say, well, as part of my job, I'm capable of doing this and this could possibly happen. Well, then you open the door, psychologically you open the door to really authentically, authentically playing it. Yeah, Authentically, because you've already 
bought into the idea that this could happen this yes, way. Yes, yes. You have to buy into the idea. I love that. You have to buy into it. You have it. to buy into the idea. That's why acting mm-hmm. is so fun. Even mm-hmm. if you never do anything on camera related or theater related, still do acting class, do improv, do everything you can because it shifts your mindset into a more playful, fun Mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And so, Law, what advice would you give people that are in voiceover that want to expand into on camera? First and foremost, what do they need to do? Who do they need to contact? What classes would they take, right? Mm -hmm. Do they need a reel? What are the essentials? Right. Well, our studio does these. I mean, Mm -hmm. many studios do classes. Now we do our online, of course. Mm -hmm. I would say one thing, though. If you can take an in-studio class in your city, in your town, in your state, definitely do it because it's a different experience when you're physically Physically in a room with Mm -hmm. people as an actor versus online. And I would say do both because being online is great, too. We get to see you on camera. You get to see what it's like just dealing with all the technical elements on camera. But I would also say be in a room with people as well. See how you like it. You have to feel it out. And I would also coach in it as well so that you can understand audition material. You can see what your type is. Similar to voiceover, right? Like, what is a realistic type for me to go after? What are the different genres I might be interested in? And then what is an actor reel? How do I build an actor reel? That's all video-based. How do I put that together? What does actors' access and casting networks have to do with it? This is all things that you want to do before you seek representation. Do not seek representation until you get your trade down. Like voiceover, you really have to have the background Mm -hmm. of understanding an actor's vocabulary. Once you get that actor's vocabulary and you know that, oh, if I go after a commercial, they're going to expect me to memorize the script. I know that. So this is the vocabulary that we speak of. And then you've got to have practice time. Practice, rehearsal, coaching, classwork. Now, Law, let's distinguish. I want to hear from you. I know how to distinguish in my words. How do you distinguish on camera from, let's say, on stage? Oh, it's a totally different world in the sense that they're both highly technical worlds, but it's a different kind of commitment when you do theater because theater oftentimes is longer. It takes a longer time to rehearse. Oftentimes the performance runs are longer and you have to physically be somewhere in person for a length of time. That can be difficult for people. So people who do theater love theater. They yes. live for theater. Mm-hmm. That's what they do. They're artists oftentimes. So you should experience that too. Like, again, go take a stand-up class. Go take an improv class. Go take something that's short term where you're live and you get to be on a stage or you get to be in a studio. So if you are a theater actor, is it easy to transition to on camera? That's a question I would get from my students because I have a lot of theater students that come into voiceover. You know what? I don't know. I don't overthink that. I think that there's too much chat about Mm -hmm. that when Mm -hmm. really excellent actors like all the Hollywood actors we know and love all started out in theater. Mm -hmm. Almost Mm -hmm. all of them started out in theater. And they found ways as they worked, as they auditioned to transition, to internalize emotion, to not allow as many Mm -hmm. physical gyration and physical largeness to happen. But I wouldn't overanalyze it because I think it's a very interesting craft. It's a craft. And it's one that you learn as you do it. You Mm -hmm. have to do it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to really learn how to do it. You have to work with different directors, different crews, different folks to see how do they see you. Similar to voiceover, how do they hear you? How do they see you? And really start buying into the archetypes that they're seeing you as. Like if I get called out for a role, I'm almost always being called out for some sort of mother role. Yeah. yeah, Almost always. Mm -hmm, So I'm mm -hmm. seen as that archetype of that, whatever that is. And then there's all sorts of variations on that theme. So really have fun with that, you know? It's so interesting because a lot of my theater actor students will come to me and then they'll find it somewhat difficult to transition because now that they're behind a microphone, they don't have another physical presence to play off of. But they have to bring that imaginary physical presence into the booth with them. That's Exactly right. That's exactly right. And that's the thing I think that's hard for theater actors. Mm -hmm. Some transition well and some do not transition well because they're used to ensemble style rehearsal. So they're used to showing up. There are other people there. You've got a director. And they've got energy back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. That's something you've got to create in the booth. And same thing with on camera. 
Even yeah. on camera, I mean, there's energy of people maybe behind the camera or maybe energy of people within the scene that you're working with. But a lot of times, if you're just being a one person on camera talent, you've got to play to that camera. So you do. And you different. have to show up prepared. Yeah. So when you go in, you have to assume, OK, they have X amount of time. They're renting equipment. They're renting location. They're doing all these things so that they can help me shine I have to know my lines. I have to know what yeah. playing a mother is. Yeah. And then I meet the other actors. <laughs> so I have to do all that yeah. work before yeah. I even get on the set. And that's very different than theater, whereas theater is much more organic. You come in and you do your table read. You discuss it. You grow the characters together. Mm-hmm. It's a very mm-hmm. different kind mm-hmm. of process. And that's why people love theater and they get addicted to sure, theater. Sure, absolutely. Because they want that energy back and forth that energy give and take. It's so interesting because in all of the voiceover theater on camera, there are all the similarities in the acting. It's just physically and mentally what you need to do slightly different to get to the place in either one. But it's all incredible. (laughs) All being said, you got to be an actor. So what a great, interesting conversation today, Law. Thank you so much for your input and your wisdom on that. I love it. Bosses, think about this as a way to maybe expand in your business. And of course, it's always great to expand your actor skills. It will all help you in the booth in the end. So... Totally. Absolutely. So big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. You too can network and communicate like pros like Law and myself. Find out more at IPDTL.com. You guys have an amazing week and we'll see you next week. Bye. See you next week. Love you guys. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL. Hey, bosses. Woohoo! I'm so excited to announce our third audition demolition coming up live September 27th. And our, uh, it di- Ah! Oh. <laughs> All right, damn it. Good morning. Piss me America. off. Piss me that off. Good. I didn't know. Fucking Audition deadline the 20th. Okay, September 27th. All right, that's my problem. I have it written here, but I just don't have it in front of my face. So... That'll end up in bloopers next year. <sighs>